Hi everyone. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps on how to create this beautiful wire link necklace. The primary characteristic of the necklace's design is interlocked wire links that consist of concentric arcs. Let's take a closer look at the necklace. The necklace displayed here shows a larger and smaller arc. There we go, the larger arc, the smaller arc that are concentrically positioned and held together with a bridging link. It's the horizontal link that passes through the two arcs. And this bridging link also supports the beads. And for the beads in this particular necklace, I use tiny seed beads. For the clasp, I use the standard hook and eye. That we have the hook and the eye part. The eye part constructed out of a figure eight link. And if you'd like to learn how to make this clasp, I have a detailed video demonstration on how to do it. The tools are material that we'll need to work with in order to create the necklace. A pair of standard flush cutters, a pair of chain link pliers, and a second pair of flat nose pliers. And finally, round nose pliers. To facilitate the process of constructing the arcs that we see here, which are attached with a link that I call the bridging link, I rigged a tool. It's a handmade tool, very simple to make. I used dowels. And the part of the tool is what you see me holding right here. It's a dowel, a half inch dowel. I drilled a hole into it, just wide enough for me to pound in a piece of 14 gauge wire. This is about the thickness of a coat hanger. So see what we have? We have a wooden dowel with a piece of wire sticking out and a hole drilled in it. I use this tool in combination with other dowels that have holes pre-drilled into them, just wide enough to allow me to position that dowel over the metal rod that's embedded into this dowel. What do I use this for? I use this for making arcs of various sizes. And how does it work? It's simple. Simply stick a piece of 20 gauge wire into the hole, lock it in place by bending it, then begin to make your coil. This is to create this type of arc, which we will explore in detail a little later on. I just want to give you an idea how the tool works. Then I take this part and position it, push it down, and grab my wire and wrap it around, forming a coil on the opposite side of the first coil. Using the side cutters, cut off the excess wire, straighten that or simply cut that off. There we go. So that's what the tool will be used for to create arcs of varying sizes. For the smaller arc, I use the half inch dowel. For the larger arc, I use the three quarter inch dowel. I'll also use it chasing hammer along with a steel block to hammer the links that I make, a pair of goggles to protect my eyes. The links themselves will be constructed out of 20 gauge nickel silver wire. If I was making this to be worn, I'm only making this as a display piece, but if I was making the necklace to be worn, I would use sterling silver wire. And a ruler or what I like to use is a self-healing mat with ruler gradations on it for measuring our wire. And in addition to the wire, you see I incorporated beads in here. I used tiny little purple seed beads. For the one I'm going to construct in the video, I'd like to incorporate rice paper beads that I made.
I'm about to start the construction of the individual composite links that make up this necklace. Each link consists of two arcs, a smaller, a larger, a bridging link. I call this the bridging link with two loops on it, either end that interconnect and the bridging link holes beads. Here I put three C beads. I like them. They're purple. These are handmade beads that I made out of rice paper and watercolor paint. The necklace that I'm about to create will be composed of these beads. To form the small arc, I'll use this handmade tool that I introduced early on in the video. And the links themselves will be made out of 20 gauge wire. For demonstration purposes, I'm using nickel silver wire. If I was making this to be worn, I'd be using sterling silver wire. Insert an end of the nickel silver into this handmade tool. Bend down the piece of wire. Now, that enables me to lock the wire in place and twist it tightly around the length of metal that's sticking out of this handmade tool, which happens to be 14 gauge nickel silver wire. Using the dowel with the pre drilled hole, insert that onto the piece of metal, and I make sure. The wire is positioned on the side of the dowel that I drew a line. Why did I draw a line? The reason why I marked one side is so I always position my wire on the same side. That guarantees that the arcs that result will always be the same size. The other thing I want to do here is I want to make sure, and I don't know if we can see this in the video, here, we want to make sure that I am beginning the wire wrap on the same side of the rod that I did my first one. Before I remove this to finish up the arc, let me show you what I mean by the position of the wire. Of the wire into the coil, the curve always starts on the same side of the arc. See how it starts to curve down? Same thing here. See? In other words, you don't want to do this. The wire curves into the coil on opposite sides here. I often use this idea for earrings, but when I'm making the necklace, I want the curve into the coil to occur on the same side of the arc. See? There you go. That gives you... Oh, perfect. You can see what I'm talking about now. Beautiful. Now that we've clarified that, my side cutters, trim off the excess. And remove that little bent wire. Now I'm able to slide out my arc. I've made the small arc. I only want the coil to consist of two and a half loops, so I cut one to third loop. Snip. Why am I counting? Doesn't seem like I really need to count for this, but just in case. I accidentally wrap more than three times around, for instance, four or five. I count to guarantee that the final arc will only have one, two and a half loops around. That's important. It's important because it affects the way they all interconnect. And I want them to connect with a nice, comfortable space in between each unit shape that comprises the composite form. And I find two and a half wraps around for each coil works perfectly. What do I do next? I'm not finished with the structure of this. I slide it back onto the metal rod. 
position it against the steel block and work it with the hammer. I tap it lightly, flatten out the metal. Nice. This accomplishes a couple of things. It strengthens the metal, gives it a nice, resilient quality. It improves the shape by flattening out the arc that I made. See that? Everything lines up nicely now. We're ready to move on and make the larger arc. So using the dowel that I prepared, with the hole drilled in it and a side mark, so I repeat wrapping the wire on the same side all the time, I use the tool with a length of my 20 gauge nickel silver wire. Insert it, wrap it around one, two, three times. Now, insert it onto the 14 gauge wire, and I pull tightly my length of wire over it. And like I did with the smaller arc, I make sure that I position my wire on the same side of the metal rod. And I pull it tight. Trim off the excess. That little bend or straighten it out. There we have it. It's nice. Now I count two and a half loops down from the top of the coil. And I do this on both sides. So we have two basic unit shapes. The next thing I do is I temper them by hammering them on my steel block using the chasing hammer. And for hammering, I reinsert the arc into the 14 gauge wire. That keeps everything centered. The hammer not only strengthens the metal, but it gives it a nice look. Having prepared the two arcs, the smaller and the outer, the next thing that I do is make the bridging link that not only ties all of this together, allows you to float a bead, but also is responsible for the interconnection. The beauty of the Bridget link that I'm going to show you is it involves a wire wrap that's formed in the shape of a coil. Therefore, since I'm not using an open link such as a jump ring, this is permanent. This necklace will not come apart. This is a composite link that I've already assembled. What I'm going to do now is make a bridging link and attach these two together. And of course, I'll also work my rice paper bead into it. I have a bunch of handmade rice paper beads that I made a while back. To start the bridging link, cut yourself a four inch length of wire. The next thing that I'll do is, using the round nose pliers, grab the wire at approximately three quarters of an inch from the end and give it a 45. Now I bend the wire up and around. You've seen me do this for other projects. It's a way of centering the loop that we're forming. Having done that, I'll insert that loop into a finished link. With my chain link pliers, I grab that loop that I'm forming. Let's get a good view. See? 
And the objective here is to wrap this length around twice. Now, if it's difficult to do, use a second pair of pliers, hold on to it, and pull. That'll give you a nice, tight wire wrap. And that is our objective. My side cutters. Push them tightly up against the wire and trim off the excess. Now, with your chain link pliers, squeeze down any wire that might be sticking up. And press. See how I compress that coil? Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. So, what do we have? We have a 4-inch length of wire attached to a composite link that's finished. Now I'm going to continue to build the next composite link. Just like you see here. Insert the end into the large arc. Then put the small arc in place and position the bead. Make sure the arcs are placed on the wire. Good. With everything in place, I'm going to form my next centered loop. Using the round nose pliers, I position the, pl the tips of the pliers about an eighth of an inch before the start of the coil. Bend the wire out at a 45 and turn it around the pliers like that. Often I'll grab my flat nose and pull it tight because I can't get it that tight just using my fingers. Having done that, I'll hold the loop that I just created firmly. And with a second pair of pliers, wrap my wire around. the wire, like you see. With the side cutters, I press it up against the wire, try to get as close as I can, trim off the excess. One last thing, take my chain link pliers, and squeeze the end down. We have two successfully attached links. I'm going to continue with the construction of the necklace. And the way I like to proceed with a project of this nature is to prepare four or five links to do in a shot. So I've cut four pieces of four inch wire that will become the bridging links. I've also prepared a few small and large arcs and I have my beads ready to go. So now that you know how to construct the arcs and the bridging link, I'm going to jump right into attaching a few more to this work in progress. Next we take the round nose pliers, give it the 45 degree bend, and loop it over. And you know what? To make it go fast, since I'm holding the pliers in my hand, rather than put them down, pick them up, put them down, pick them up, let me make the bends in all four pieces of wire. Little things like that do save time. I've eliminated a motion, the motion of putting down the tool and picking it up again.
Now we'll switch tools. Let's thread a loop into its corresponding loop of the assembled piece. I'll grab the loop firmly as close to the intersection of the two lines of wire that I can get. Then with the additional pair of pliers, I form a tight wire wrap. Once around, twice around. Good, that is tight. Time to work with the side cutters. Press the side cutter firmly against the wire. Cover it with my finger so it doesn't fly out. Snip it off. You should also know that I'm wearing my goggles. I'm not going to take a chance with my eyes. Now that the next bridging link has been attached to the finished links, I'm going to add the arcs. It's important to note at this point that when I add the arcs, I make sure they're all facing the same direction. And you have front and a back. Okay, let's make sure the backs are always facing the back side. Correct. Good. And we'll add a bead. See the process? Each new link gets tied into a previously added link. And I always make sure the arcs are facing the right direction. Now, hold in the wire firmly a little more than an eighth of an inch. I found the last one that I added, I left only an eighth of an inch gap, and it was a little tight to work with. So I'm going to go a little bit more now. Okay, bend it out at a 45. Up and around. Hold it firmly with my flat nose. This is nice and long, so I almost don't need to use two pair, but I will. Because I want a very tight wrap. Okay. Then with my side cutters, press firmly onto the piece that shoots out. I press the side cutters against the coil that I just made. Snip. Then with the flat nose, I'll press down any wire that might be sticking up. What I'm starting to like is the variability of the, the look of the beads, because they're handmade. No two are exactly the same, and I think that adds charm to the piece. I devoted quite a bit of time to finish up the links. The next step is to make the clasp. So. To make the clasp. Let's put this on the side. Still working with the same 20 gauge nickel silver wire. I'll cut a length of wire. First thing I'm going to form is the eye part. And for the eye, I make what I call a figure eight link. And I attach the figure eight link directly to the last link in the necklace. Forming the figure eight link. I bend the wire like so. That's why I call it the figure eight. I thread an end, the short end usually, onto the link that I plan on attaching it to. Then, with my chain link pliers, then holding the wire firmly, I wrap the Remaining end around the loop that's attached to the necklace. 
Then I'll trim the wire right about there. I don't know if you can see that. See? I, I position my plier just about in the middle of that link. I cut off the excess wire. Then, with my flat nose pliers or my chain link pliers, I press down that cut off end. Squeeze it so it's now positioned, you can just about see it, in the middle of the link. And then I'll push it down. So what I've done is I've, I've tucked the end of the wire into the figure eight link so it's not sticking out. Now with this end, Pull it away from the figure eight link. This enables me to access it a little bit better. Then with my side cutters, I press my side cutter firmly up against the body of the link. And I cut off that remaining bit of wire. But I hold it with my finger so it doesn't fly out. Okay. And there we have it. We have the figure eight link attached to the end of our necklace to create the hook. Unwind another length, maybe six inches or so, of wire. First thing I do now is I create a little bend at the top of the wire and then crimp it. Squeeze it tight. Next I position the length of wire with a little crimp at the top into my round nose pliers hold it firmly at the wide part of the plier and I turn my metal like so. I've made a hook. Now before I go any further I forged the hook on the steel block using my chasing hammer. Notice I'm only hitting the hook area. I'm not working down into the wire. I want to leave the rest of the wire soft. By hammering the dead soft wire that I use to form the hook, I firm up the shape of that hook. Still using the round nose pliers, Position it right about there. Bend your wire out at a 45. Then up and around. See what I did? I've made a loop at the end of the hook. The final step is to thread the end of the wire into the loop of the remaining link. And that's it. We've attached the hook to the necklace. Using my chain link pliers, I hold that loop firmly and I wrap the remaining length around once, twice, and like I did with the individual links, to get a tight wrap, you can use an additional pair of pliers to do that. Three times. Okay. So I wrapped it around three times. Then I'm going to squeeze it to make sure I have a nice tight coil. Using the side cutters, I trim off the excess wire. Now, Going back to my chain link pliers, I'll squeeze down the little piece of metal that might be sticking up. The hook and eye clasp has been added to the necklace. A finished concentric arc link necklace with handmade and painted rice paper beads, complete with a clasp. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
I had lots of fun making it.